Hi there, this is Prof. Johan from the Department of Chemical Engineering at the University of Pretoria. Welcome to my series on the Introduction to Chemical Engineering and Chemical Engineering Principles. In this lecture video, I want to talk about the mole unit in molecular weight. It is written as mole and the units for the mole is MOL. And this is the SI unit for this. Now this quantity is effectively a mass unit and it describes to us the number of thingies that stuff is made up of. So what I'm referring to, I'm referring to the number of atoms or molecules or other things like uh, electrons that certain things matter is made up of. And this number is called the Avogadro's number, which is 6.022 times 10 to the power of 23 thingies. So in one mole of carbon, there would be 6.022 times 10 to the 23 atoms of carbon. And this will comprise of a certain mass. Now, when we talk about moles, we must also be able to understand that this is something that scales, like I said, SI unit with the rest of the SI units. So the mole that we're referring to in the beginning is basically a gram mole. And that's per definition again. We can then also have a kilogram mole. And there's a relationship between a gram mole and a kilogram mole in the same way that there's a relationship between a gram and a kilogram, where 1,000 gram moles would be equal to one kilogram mole. We could also go to a pound mole, where the relationship between the pound mole and the kilogram mole will be the same as the relationship between a kilogram and a pound. So the same way we would convert from a kilogram to a pound, we're going to convert from a kilogram mole to a pound mole. And we could even have a ton mole, metric ton, short ton, long ton, it doesn't really matter. As long as you remember that the base unit is a gram mole and the conversion would then be in the same way that we do the other mass conversions. Now, as I said in the beginning, this mole unit is related to a mass. And I've even used the example here to say that if I have one mole of carbon, it, it contains a certain number in the Avogadro's number, number of carbon atoms. And you can think for yourself that that relates to a certain mass. Now, this mass is unique to every single element. And it's defined to say that if I have one mole of carbon 12, it would be exactly 12 grams. So from here, we can define a new quantity called the molecular weight. And the molecular weight could also be molecular mass, if you want to be more accurate, and which is defined as the mass in grams of that element, which contains one gram mole of that element. And this is referred to as the molecular mass. Now, the keen observer will notice that I could also extend this to the mass in kilograms over the kilogram mole, or even the mass in pounds over the pound mole of the substrate. And all those things are going to be exactly equal. We refer to this quantity as the molecular weight, as I said before. And it's defined by this, stating that the molecular mass for carbon would be equals to 12 grams per gram mole. Or 12 grams per mole and this is per definition now this is the definition and from here all other molecules all other elements are based relative to this value so if we're going to talk about the molecular weight of hydrogen which which is going to be related to or relative to this value it actually boils down to the fact that we calculate the weight of one mole of hydrogen, and that is going to be one gram 
hydrogen per mole hydrogen. And it's going to be relative to this grams of carbon per mole of carbon. And this ends up giving us a value of 1. You'll notice that I don't write any units for this. Molecular weight is seen to be dimensionless because it is grams per mole over grams per mole. Strictly speaking, it is not dimensionless because it's grams of hydrogen in this case over grams of carbon divided by the moles of hydrogen top and divided by the moles of carbon at the bottom. So strictly speaking, it's not dimensionless, but molecular weight is seen as the dimensionless quantity because it is relative to this definition where we said that one mole of carbon weighs 12 grams. I hope this helps you. I'm not going to spend too much more time on molecular mass as you should have done this in chemistry. The important bit for me here is to make you guys aware that I can have a gram mole and I can have a kilogram mole and I can have a pound mole and I can have any other mole that you can think of based on mass, an ounce mole. And I will convert between these exactly the same way I would normally convert between different unit systems. For the first case, there is a factor of a thousand difference. So if I have one kilogram mole, I would have a thousand gram moles. And the same would go for the pound mole. If I have one pound mole, I'll have 0 0.4538 kilograms. So I'll do the same conversion I would do always. If I'm going to look at the ladder method, I will, say, for instance, say 100 gram mole and now I'm going to convert the same way we normally do where I say 1000 gram mole will be one kilogram mole. I can cancel this out and I have my answer and I would have if I would have converted between four kilogram mole and I wanted to convert this to pound mole I would have said 0 0.4538 kilogram mole would have been one pound mole and the answer would have been same way we convert always we can convert between the different unit systems for moles the next thing i want to talk about is the average molecular mass so here i've referred to the molecular mass but what if we, for instance, talk about air consisting of O2 and N2? And there's a certain concentration of the O2 and the N2 in air. And we can estimate this or approximate this as 21% O2 and 79% N2 in air. We can now lump air together and say we have 100% air. And this 100% air will have a certain average molecular mass. So because it's made up of oxygen, it's got a molecular mass of 32 grams per mole. And we have nitrogen, which got a molecular mass of 28 grams per mole. I actually think to be more accurate, we're going to use 28.2 grams per mole. I can now calculate an average molecular mass for air. Because 21% of air is oxygen and 79% of air is nitrogen. 100% of air will have some sort of average molecular mass. And we can calculate it in this way. If I have one gram mole of air, this will consist out of 0 0.21 gram moles O2 and 0 0.79 gram moles of N2. And you can see if I add these two together, I'm going to get back to this one gram per mole. So I've basically taken this fraction, multiplied it by the total moles of air to calculate the moles of O2. And the same for the N2. So if I do my normal unit conversion thingy, I'm going to say one gram mole air. So gram mole air would be 0 0.21 gram mole O2. 
and now I would say one gram mole of O2 would be 32 grams of O2 coming from the molecular mass and I will calculate that this equals to 6.72 grams of O2 and in the same way we can do the nitrogen and we calculate that one gram of air contains 22.28 grams of N2. Now if we add these two together we end up getting 29.0 grams of air because the O2 and the N2 together is equal to the amount of air for every gram mole of air. This means that the average molecular mass for air equals 29 grams per mole. We could also have done this in another way. We could have said that the average molecular mass for air is equal to this percentage of N2, which is the moles of N2, over the moles of air. And I want to calculate the average molecular mass, so I'm going to multiply this with the molecular mass of N2, which is the grams of N2 over the mole of N2. You can see these cancel out. And I would add that to the fraction of O2, which is now the mole of O2 over the mole air. Because I'm working with O2, I need to multiply it with the molecular mass of O2. These cancel out again. And I end up with a quantity of, and this is now grams into over mole air plus, and this is the grams of O2 over mole air. And you know, if I have a common denominator, I could add these two things to each other. And the grams of O2 plus the grams of N2 equals the grams of air. So this will become, and there I have the average molecular mass for air, calculated in two different ways. Now this brings me to the last important bit on moles and the mole unit. And that is what we have done here. This is a mole fraction. So it tells me, that there is some sort of fraction, this tells me that there's some sort of fraction based on moles, where I have the mole of stuff over the mole total. And I also have a thing where I have a fraction of mass, where I have the mass of stuff over the mass total. And what is important to note is that these two quantities are not the same. This is the total moles and this is the total mass. And the total moles and the total mass cannot be the same. And for that reason, the max fraction is not equal to the mole fraction. Now, why is this important? This is important because at some stage, you're going to tell me that the mass fraction multiplied by the molecular weight equals to some sort of thing. And this is absolutely not true. Why is this not true? This is not true because molecular mass is the grams of stuff over the gram mole of stuff. So if I'm going to multiply this by a mass fraction, now the mass fraction is mass of stuff over mass total. And you can clearly see that these two things do not cancel out. So I cannot multiply them and expect that I'm going to end up with some sort of added together total amount of things. For me to do this, I need to use the mole fraction where I have mole of stuff and mole total. And now it will cancel out and I'm going to end up with gram per mole or the molecular mass for that fraction of the component. So I can calculate the average molecular mass by working with the mole fraction, not the mass fraction. And that's because these two things are not equal. 
So whenever you're going to calculate the average molecular mass and try and you are going to use the mass fraction, it is fundamentally wrong. It will never work, it cannot work, it doesn't balance. I hope you found this lecture useful and I'll see you again next time.